apostles. The church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Now as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aenas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aenas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Child of your serving girl, you have 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the people, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. We can, who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then, what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have two opposites. It's beautiful how we have the Gospel reading where Jesus is teaching and it just becomes too difficult. Who can believe it? And the only one, a few left, and Simon Peter answers, but to who can we go? And in the first reading of Acts, so post-resurrection, uh, we have Peter is healing and many, many converts. I would think not too many people would be running away with the incredible healings they received. But when God touches our heart, everything changes. And we will know, just like in the psalm, the response, what return can I make to the Lord for all he has given us? We never will be able to pay back what God has given us when God has touched our heart. And so, and in that, there of course come, we realize we have a vocation. And of course, everyone has a vocation. A child has a vocation to be a good child and to learn. But as adults, of course, we have to also choose a vocation. And it can be a lay vocation, it can be a vocation in the financial industry, bringing God in a very harsh um, uh, uh, environment, or it can be to religious life. And often, when, when young people think, especially young men think of religious life, they think of the diocesan priesthood, and its most priests are obviously diocesan, but they often overlook that there are so many other choices. The vocation to religious life is like a marriage. There's a lot of discernment needed. To where do I fit in? Am I more monastic? Am I more uh, in community? Do I long for more community life? Am I someone who likes to be on the go and is not afraid for, of many changes. And so we have the different streams. Of course, we have the Jesuits, I'm a Jesuit, the Franciscans, Carmelites, the Dominicans, Benedictines, and so on. And they all have their own charism. And it's to find out where one belongs. Of course, as a Jesuit, most Jesuits, Jesuit priests, are not uh, working in parishes. Only 10% apparently work in parishes. But Jesuits can be found everywhere, uh, mainly in universities, science, retreat centers, and so on. We're all, we're literally all over the place. And, um, and that's where our work is. We are called to be on the fringes of the church. So for instance, interreligious dialogue, with, uh, with uh, Muslims, uh, Hinduism, and so on. Trying to build those bridges for the church already for 400 years. 
it can be missionary work. I just had a new community member, uh, Father Bill Robbins, who was a science teacher in Nepal for 44 years. And he comes back, uh, has come back to Canada because of health reasons. And so Jesuits are everywhere. And it is for someone to be on the go in a U.S. province, a Jesu U.S. Jesuit province, a number of years ago had the slogan, become a Jesuit and travel the world. And literally, we will travel the world in a formation. In a formation, we, we are sent to different places. They call them experiment. Experiments might be a hospital, might be a third world experience in the South. Uh, we, we go everywhere. My own studies, although I entered at a late life, I've been in the US, Australia, and of course, Canada. But it is to form someone with a global view, not a narrow view, but, uh, because a diocesan priest is formed to be serving a local bishop in local churches, while we are called to all kinds of places. And the world, a broad world view is very important that we understand that different people do the same thing in completely different ways. And so that's the Jesuit life, and to be ready to be moved forever. And so we have a fourth vow, which means to be available to the Pope at any time. So if the Pope, the Pope is not gonna call me, but if I got a call tomorrow to go to Timbuktu, I will be packing my suitcase and go to Timbuktu. Amen. And so let us bring our prayers before the Lord.